Good evening. I'm Siwapili Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. This is Native Voice TV. This is Native Voice TV. And this is Native Voice TV. And this is Native Voice TV. People do hear us and remember us that we were on Native Voice television first. Saw them first here. We're watching Native Voice TV. Good evening, I'm Siwapili Rose Amador, and this is Native Voice TV. Well, this evening we have with us one of my favorite guests. <laughs> Welcome, Garbert Goodplume. And Garbert, give us your background, where you're from. Well, I'm from Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. <clears throat> we call it Camp 344. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> and um, from the Great Sioux Nation, uh, Tituwa Nation, we speak the Lakota language, and um, I'm the band of the Oglala. And you're also our jet setter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Garvard's been all over the country. He's been to the United Nations. He's been everywhere uh, yeah. representing your people and fighting for your people. Um, let me, before we get into some of your travels and what you've been up to, tell us, you know, recently this whole, this terrible situation in Sedona with that so-called sweat lodge and charging people and all of that. Give us your take on that. Well, before I came, <clears throat> when that happened, I talked with a lot of the elders, different elders. They were very upset over that. And some of them were coming down to do press charges, I guess. I don't know. They haven't heard anything about that. But it was really um, something that was foretold about maybe two, three years before that because mm -hmm. people were abusing our spirituality. Right. And there was a lot of selling of that and the Sundance. And uh, it was profit-making. Mm -hmm. And when we went to one of our, um, our prayer meetings, <clears throat> we were told there that... Uh, this needs to stop. And if it wasn't, there's going to be a, a lot of consequences coming up mm -hmm. and things are going to start taking place. <clears throat> and so when this happened, it was kind of like a fear that went throughout the people, realizing that, you know, what they said was going to happen, happened. And it is really something that has been going on our reservation a lot. And our people have been trying to stop it for a long time. And now, when this took place, it, it's put in a place where the natives are going to be blamed for it. Mm -hmm. We're going to get the blame, and they'll probably put a law against it and all this stuff. And uh, it's just really... Uh, uh, it's terrible. Uh, we were just devastated by that. Yeah, that was horrible. Yeah. Horrible. That they would do something like that. I mean, just... Yeah, because it's not their way. No. We have a simple way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Where I go sweat, where uh, I'm going to say the, uh, what I'm saying, the pure, real Lakota people, speaking people, have their uh, inipi, we call it inipi, giving of life ceremony. It's a purification. <clears throat> it's simple. We don't. Uh, they don't burn people in there to see how brave they are to handle the heat. That's not the purpose. The purpose is to cleanse our spirit and our minds and our hearts. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, it's simple. So we only go like 30 minutes to 45 minutes, depending how many mm -hmm. people are in there and who's conducting the ceremony, who's um, sponsoring the ceremony. So we do it, and then, and then the, the ones that are running the the sweat lodge would ask people who are sick, uh, and they're, they're required to go at least one round, or you know, if, if you're not comfortable, mm -hmm. say so, and they'll let you out. Yeah. So it's not, it's not something that, chamber. yeah, it's not a torture chamber. It's a, it's a prayer, mm -hmm. a prayer type of thing that we go in. I, I wanted to bring it up because I know some people have never heard of it except for that. Yeah, you know, and that's not what it is. And I thought it would be important for, especially on this show, that you know, s that someone talk about it and explain that that's not the culture, that's not what it's supposed to be. Yeah, that's not what it's for. It's mostly designed for us. It's our way. And people are picking it up and going after it. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon it's money-making, and it's, it's, it's just a game for them. 
For us, it's a way of life. And so this is why none of these things ever happen in our sweats. You know, and we heard before this really took place, before it really came out, there were things going on like that in different areas. Mm -hmm. People were dying in the sweat lodge in Minneapolis, even in South Dakota, people that were probably not called or chosen to do these things. They are just doing it for, you know, lucrative thing. Mm -hmm. And so it's coming back on them. And the elders would say, These are very dangerous and they're holy. So we got to treat it that way. Otherwise, you're going to pay for the consequences. If not you, your family. Mm -hmm. This is really uh, something that's uh, ancient. It's serious. It's nothing that you play with. Right, exactly. Thanks for talking about that. Now, last time you were here, you were on your way to New York. You were going to be going the following week, and it was, um, what was it for? <laughs> Tell us all about that trip. Oh, we were going to New York because we were on, the, I think it was the 46th or 48th session of the uh, uh, UN uh assembly, but mm -hmm. then uh, it's with the permanent form that was created for the indigenous people on the indigenous people's rights. And I think that was the eighth or sixth session that they were having. And so we were there like nine days mm -hmm. and uh, there was a lot of issues there. And we went there mostly for human rights violations, treaty violations, and mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> participated in all the side events and try to get uh, all the information we can get. How many nations were represented there? Well, they come from the uh, seven regions of the world. That's through Russia, uh, South, South America. America, Central America, Australia, Africa, all different uh, indigenous people, mm -hmm. even from Japan. I didn't know they had you know, indigenous people there. Uh, Mongolia, you know, they were all there. We were there and we got to visit. It's like a family reunion, but mm -hmm. we were bringing the issues up on the indigenous people's rights because the original text was never passed. And Article 3 and 36 was passed by the Human Rights Commission. And then later on, they abolished the Human Rights Commission and made a Human Rights Council, which passed a watered down declaration of indigenous people's rights. Mm -hmm. And so then they put new council on there that voted in that didn't know what was going on. And we usually had five countries that was against the original text, uh, US, uh, Canada, England, Australia, New Zealand, and they didn't vote for the new declaration. <clears throat> they said it's too vague, didn't have teeth. The US didn't want to go with it because it was interfering with our laws. So it goes on down like that and then uh, the people like South America, Central America are complaining that th this declaration isn't working. Ah. And we have it, but what country and who's going to protect us? There's mm -hmm. no protection there again. So permanent b form is a good form. They bring all the issues, but it's not really, um, how would you say, it's not really on the ball on it's the things. Effective. That would, yeah, yeah, effective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where we were there, we did a recommendations with the, the Apaches and the Canadians and the, the Filipinos and the um, Hawaiians. We got together and we put in a, a recommendation that uh, the Permanent Forum United Nations would look into our waters, mm -hmm. our contaminated waters, uranium, all this. So the World Health Organization is... Uh, was asked to come to all the reservations and different indigenous areas to mm -hmm. uh, look into all this. So that's one good thing that happened there. So they did follow through with that, though? Yeah, that rec well, that recommendation. Good. And that was really, well, we were surprised they were, they were doing that. I mean, it just because they were playing with the rest of the stuff. They stretch everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I really felt bad for the uh, South American people, mm -hmm. like the Mapuches of Chile, uh, Brazil. And after the meeting there, we heard that uh, there was a massacre in Brazil with some of the people that were at the oh, UN. Really? And, uh, because they were? They went? spoke out, yeah, they spoke out. <clears throat> so a lot of these things are mm -hmm. going on. I got to meet people, the chief from Brazil, um, Africa, Lebanon, Algeria. They were going, they're all going through the same thing we're going through. So when we look at it, it's like a second colonialism coming upon. They're mm -hmm. caught talking about development. And then the U.S. said they couldn't help us. <clears throat> Our spokesperson wouldn't talk about it, but 
it really made me feel bad because here we were struggling. We have human rights violations, treaty violations. We go there and we talk, and then the UN says, we can't help you because you're North American Indians. Northern Hemisphere, Canada, and Arctic were well-developed people. <laughs> and then they, they bring up the casinos, <clears throat> which casinos is maybe all right for some, but for us, it's not doing anything. Mm -hmm. We don't see no dividend checks. We don't see right. no improvements. But it, they assume just, every yeah, they Indian assume, is rich yeah. and has a, their own casino. So it's kind of bad because there's a South, the Central and South America people look at us different too. They look at oh, us like, they? They yeah, assume. they give us that we're better than them and they, uh. they won't really uh, treat us with respect because mm. they think we're better off. But mm. we're not. And we tell them we're still in the same boat. Yeah. What they did to you, I mean, they're doing to you is what they did to us. So it's kind of like history repeating itself. Right. Now, you, you've talked about the uranium in the water and the mining. Is that still going on, your reservation? That's still going on. But we're, what, what I said earlier was that the investigation's coming on mm -hmm. with that uh, World Health Organization. But the companies, and they're still pushing the state, the states are still pushing that because it's money making. Mm -hmm. And we found out that the uranium uh, prices dropped, but they're still continuing to store it and because the uranium might come back up again. And the bad part is these uranium companies are not from the United States, they're from out of country. They take the uranium and then they sell it to other countries. Oh, really? This is what we found out. And then it's not benefiting us anything. According to our treaties and stuff, they didn't get no consent. Uh, I read a report um, from a commission uh, at Geneva, I was looking at old commissions and the the commissioner agent told the Indians that we won't take anything above the treetops, below everything below in the valley. Mm -hmm. And then what they take out, 20% were going to go back to the natives, which never happened. It's still not happening. Oh, and I just found out that the Obama had a meeting with all the uh, tribal, 556 right, right. federally recognized tribes hoping that something would come out of that, you know, because we did put some uh, uh, complaints at the CERD Committee on Racial Discrimination in uh, United Nations in Switzerland, mm -hmm. and we have the hearing coming up in the year 2011. So with that in place, I think a lot of things are taking place in this area here too. Do you think he recognizes the plight of the Indians? Oh, we're hoping to. Yeah. <laughs> it would. Well, he, what he asked the different departments to kind of open their doors, do you think that'll happen? Yeah, I think it'll happen. Well, a lot of the elders are saying we need to get together to make him, uh, how would you say, it? what he said when he was running in campaign, mm -hmm. to keep his word and remind right. him about it. You know, he's the only president that we see that is willing to work with our people. That's true. This is the first time they've ever done anything like that. Any president, even recognizing that Native people exist. Yeah. Well, we had like three, four presidential visits before mm -hmm. Clinton, and uh, I can't remember. But I know we had Khrushchev one time back in the 50s mm -hmm. from Russia. He came, and then we had, uh, I can't remember who else, the other presidents. But they came. But, you know, it, they were telling us that we have that right because we, as a nation, we um, were the only nation, indigenous nation, that uh, fought with the United States and we won the battle twice. And, you know, and, and it, well, that's historical. Right, right. So they have to meet with us nation to nation, not government to government. Uh -huh. And so this is what we're hoping at UN, that we, we get our title back. Uh -huh. and that we be recognized as a nation and be recognized as peoples, also as human beings. Right. Well, that's good. So there's three big things that we're wow, pushing. Wow, that's pretty heavy. So let's take a quick pause, and then I want to hear about what you're doing with the railroads, too, because you're overseeing that oh, okay. construction. So we'll be right back. Looking for the skills and training you need to get a new career? Call CTC, the Center for Training and Careers, and start working towards that new career today. Call CTC in San Jose. We're here with Garbert Goodplume, and he's been telling us about 
a lot of work he's been doing for the Native people. And one of it's something you have a new project you've been working on. What is that? Um, I've been on a board. Uh, the, my tribe, the Oglala Sioux tribe, uh, gave some recommendations, and they asked me to be on their board. It's called Tribal Historical Preservation Office. So one of the board members, and I've been overseeing archaeologists' uh, work monitoring for the mm -hmm. tribe. Not only I, but uh, the Cheyennes and the Crows and the Shoshones and the Kiowas, we get together and we, because we all dwelled in that same area. Mm -hmm. And so some of these sites might have belonged to them or us, you know, and then we, we do recommendations. We actually, uh, not too long ago in uh, August, I had to do uh, a project with uh, DMNE, uh, I think it's M M yeah, DMNE, Dakota, Minnesota Eastern Railroad, mm -hmm. are uh, laying the tracks through Wyoming there, and they found some uh, uh, ceremonial sites. And so I had to go there and do some monitor monitoring and uh, recommendations to avoid them or go around them, mm -hmm. because if they destroy them, you're just still a, a, like destroying a race of people. Mm -hmm. And these are landmarks, and these are historical prayer sites that uh, were there. And they said we weren't there over 100 years, but well, we could have still been there if we weren't forced on reservations. Because the whole eastern, western, yeah, eastern part of Wyoming was Lakota country, mm -hmm. up on the, the Bozeman Trail, up into Montana, where our tribe stopped uh, the government a couple of times. We burned down couple of those forts, they gave it up, uh -huh. and then they made another treaty, and then it, it just goes on and on as you read history. And we're still making history on that because they're taking all our resources. And if you look at it, we're all indigenous people like the Shoshone, Western Shoshones are going through the same thing, right. different right. other tribes. And what's happening is we're making this country rich with native resource. Mm -hmm. And some of that resource should come back to Absolutely. us. Absolutely. A lot of our old people used to say, when I get the Black Hills, and there's still that promise hoping that they will get mm -hmm. the Black Hills. Uh, not the money, we're not selling the Black Hills, it's the mineral rights that they right. promised that they would give to us, and they, they never did. So all these things are taking place, and then with these companies coming in, uh, like oil companies and um, uh, power plant companies coming in, they want to build. Mm -hmm. But then there's sacred sites, burial sites. So it's all new developments that yeah, you're kind developments of overseeing. coming in, yeah. And they're getting stimulus money and federal money. <clears throat> so this is why we have to monitor, and the feds come in, the state comes in, and there's a whole bunch How of. How responsive um, are they? Well, right now we're all in a working process now, mm -hmm. and we're hoping to come to a a, a place of a meeting yet. Mm -hmm. But we're still putting in recommendations to see what where we're going to be at. So we've Do been doing that. Do they seem cooperative? They seem very cooperative. They want to learn. They've been mm -hmm. asking a lot of questions. Uh, they want to do a like MOU, memorandum of understanding, mm -hmm. uh, or agreements, and so with tribal recommendations. But we still have to look at everything. Really look at it piece by piece, not just overlook anything, because a lot of right. these places are really very important places for us. So these companies will have to respect that. So they've been respecting it so far, so it's good. We work with the BLM, to Bureau of Land Management, mm -hmm. and uh, all these um, other companies that been asking, except for one company we're really fighting with is, is called PowerTech. Mm -hmm. They're just very uncooperative with the state. It's it's just really a battle there. So do they buy the land? Do they eminent domain? They just expand on what they have? How do they? Some, they're trying it? to use eminent domain on mm -hmm. the ranchers because the ranchers are for us too. And they don't want to give up their lands. Actually, this railroad company wants to expand their tracks and they want to speed up their travel because they're going like 30, 40 miles an hour mm -hmm. right now, but they want to speed up to 1680 to haul all this coal towards the east to power plants. And the reason why we really don't want them to expand or come back is because we don't know what kind of hazardous waste they're bringing back. We found out that uh, a bat in one of our badlands there that there was a lot of uh, hazardous nuclear waste mm -hmm. being dumped there. And with this contamination, it's causing 
a lot of cancer. Mm -hmm. We've been having funerals every week, every day, there's somebody dying. And they're like 30 and 40 year old people. And this is really a devastating thing that's happening. And, and that's been brought up to the United Nations also. Well, it seems just, like they would be looking into that before they expand these railroads. Yep. I mean, because so we, you talked several years ago about the uranium in the water and and the way they were polluting the reservation. Yeah, so we're reminding them all the time. And hopefully that when these chairmen went to uh, Washington, D.C., this mm -hmm. will all come out too, because we gave them all the reports. And hope, that's probably why they're creating this tribal historical preservation so we can monitor all these things that are going on, which they never did before, so. That's true. This is it a national um, THPO? Bureau? The the um, the oversight uh, bureau. Tribal historical thing. Right. Yeah, it's a national thing. Every tribe has a a, a monitor, <clears throat> and they they're monitoring in their areas. And you we, wonder how good are the MOUs if they never kept the other treaties either. Yeah. So. See, that's what we bring up all the right, time. Right. How do we know you're going to keep your word when what happened in the past mm -hmm. with the treaties? A lot of people tell us not to think about the treaties, but we do because that's what we're learning on. Right. And we're telling our young people, and we're hoping more of our young people get involved. This is your land. This is treaty lands. This was set aside for us to live undisturbed, but yet they came in disturbed, you know. So there's a lot of things going on. It's, just, it's a lot of work. And you said some of the land has been sold off? Some of the land has been sold off. The BLM took the land, you know, and our people... Uh, because of uh, <clears throat> hard times, they don't think about it, and then they sell their land, and they regret it later on. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard, you know. Sure. It's just it's that divide and conquer they use. Mm -hmm. They scare the people. They tell them one thing, and they do another thing. So we're catching all these loopholes too. So I guess in a way, I'm glad that they taught us English because we're learning mm -hmm. and we're seeing what they're doing. Yeah. And it it's kind of you know it's just. Kind of funny, but. <laughs> so, what are your next projects? Where are you traveling to? I know you're always traveling. My next travel, I got invited to Russia and Bulgaria. And I guess there's some powers going on and there's Indian settlements. <laughs> 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 Probably going to monitor or something. Uh -huh. But I've been, you know, a bit, I get a lot of invitations, but then because of my health, I've been slowing down and trying to um, recover myself and then didn't go. There's so many mm -hmm. things to see and report and record as history for our grandchildren because we're thinking more of our future generations or seven generations mm -hmm. and their generations right if these things are gone we no longer exist we're no longer who we are and we got to let them know that we're still here and we're still a people are the young is the young, younger generation receptive not really it's gotten so because they're colonized no I mean we're losing our language um, we just had a language summit meeting and they were charging $300 a person to attend the language summit and I was like this is our language we don't have to be charged right. but they're making dictionaries and they're bringing the language but the language isn't as accurate as my grandfather's my grandmother my late grandmother and grandfather talked mm -hmm. I could speak a little bit, but my wording is different. This is why it's so important. You need to know your language real good because when you go to a ceremony, these words are sacred words. Mm -hmm. And because they're sacred words, <clears throat> they work. So you know, if you don't know it and you're just praying anyway, it, it don't work. You wonder why your prayers are not being answered because you're not as spiritual and your prayers have to be just accurate to mm -hmm. that. Just like one word. <clears throat> There's one Lakota word that uh, I learned. It's called we chozani, life or health. <clears throat> we is God. Cho is beautiful. Za is strength or strong. And ni is life. So there's one, two, three, four, five words put together to make health, the word health. Oh. So this is how important our, your, our language is. Mm -hmm. It's not just little words that uh, you know people just play with our words too mm -hmm. so it's kind of hard oh. now you've always lived there in the same area 
Do you think your health, you've had a lot of health problems recently. Has that been attributed, do you think, to being raised there? Because I know you were mentioning a lot of the kids, the family members, and so forth have different illnesses. Yeah, I think so. I think it's, I blame the water again. Mm -hmm. Then we blame the air, sure. too, because we got out of open uh, uranium, uranium mm -hmm. pits that are still not cleaned up. The wind blows, and it's blowing downwind. Um, there's a variety of things, especially the water, because this little town called Edgemont, South Dakota, was an army depot, mm -hmm. and uh, they had a uranium, <clears throat> um, I, I, they had some kind of a uranium thing, their pit or a pond, mm -hmm. and the linings broke and went into the aquifers. And this was in the early, uh, late 50s and 60s, early 60s. Mm -hmm. From there, we, they started noticing that our children, or we started coming uh, with um, kidney yeah. failure, cancer, diabetes is really coming strong because of the aquifers that underneath the reservation has been contaminated. Well, we're really glad you're here with us today. And we're going to bring you back again because we want to know <laughs> what's going on and, and where you're at and where you're traveling. And we're going to look at some of your pictures throughout the show. And thanks for being here, Garfield. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again next week on Native Voice TV. Good night. Want to find out what's going on in your community? El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today.